because this step right here is the most important step in all of either tiny house building or van building. <clears throat> Every time I'm filming, I swear to God, the batteries decide to just run out on me. I brought backups, just in case. So what's going on? I got this cord. Oh, and I got the other cord over there. My goodness, this is a lot of work. I don't actually need these on. Uh, I do need these on. Everybody, I made an appointment to get my spray foam done on the tiny house. So I need to have everything in the walls completely done. Two weeks and six of those days out of the two weeks that I have, I'm not even gonna be here. I'm going to Tiny Fest. Just like a tiny house festival and it's open to the public and it's amazing and I love it and I love going to those and I love interacting with people. And this time I'm speaking on the main stage. I'm giving a talk about designing in small spaces because I don't know, maybe I know what I'm doing here. So right now, this cord in my hand right here, half of the AC cord, the other half is right here. So these two AC cords, Hopefully, are uh, small enough, or, whoo, that's gonna be tight. But it's gonna work. And I'm gonna make some holes with my trusty metal hole saw bit. Woo -hoo. Because my AC is made by Cruise and Comfort, and it is a special 48 volt. Chris, the owner of Cruise and Comfort, makes these AC units. It's a, it's a mini split. It's a low voltage mini split system, okay? And people have been putting them in their vans. I put them in my second van, but it's, I'm gonna, I'm putting a 48 volt in here because I'm using 48 volt batteries. It, and if, if you understand a mini split system, there's a condenser unit on the outside and then there's like an evaporator on the inside. I didn't wanna go with a traditional, you know, mini split system that runs off of 120 volt which are actually pretty energy efficient. Using a 48 volt system, might as well go with a 48 volt battery system. Chris is a good friend of mine. We've worked together in the past. So there are three parts to this system. There's the evaporator that goes up high, which uh, you know spews out cold air, which is gonna be great. There's the condenser unit that is underneath on the outside that goes into the floor unit, which is gonna be like the intake. And then these pipes that I'm gonna be running into the walls or go up into the evaporator. I know maybe you guys didn't want to know about that, but I figured this is what you got to do to have a really cool custom tiny house. You also have to do that if you want a really cool custom van for all of you van people out there. So right now, I got a two inch hole saw bit. I'm gonna be running at the floor, which is where my feet are right now, which is going to be like an L couch. So I got to run it into the wall up the wall, into the ceiling, and then across, and then back down to where the evaporator is gonna sit, which is right up there. And then go slow. more of those to drill. That's gonna be fun. We're gonna cut some more holes though. All right, I'm gonna go cut these holes. I'm gonna cut the camera, but pick this back up after I maybe run one of these and see if I can uh, hopefully have enough length here with these tubes. I don't know if I will. I'm a little nervous, a little nervous. I find it very interesting that not that many people show, you know, this aspect of the process. I just realized something not so good. Not so good at all, actually. Oh, crap. I'm going to drill another couple holes, and I really, really don't want to do that. Such is life. I have part of the frame, like bolt system, right here, and I was going to run the tubing through this bottom hole down here, and I was going to run it through here, and then I was going to run it up and then across. 
part, part of the bolt system kit of the tiny house is blocking that wire hole. So I can't, I can't run through there. Obviously the camera battery is about to die right now, so I'm gonna turn it off. I'm gonna figure this whole, this whole, whole situation out, ha 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 ha. Well before, I get, well, before I cut the camera and try to go charge the battery, I guess I can kind of show you guys really the, the whole wiring system. It's been, it's been kind of a, an absolute just terror because the best analogy I can give to you right now is try to play chess without any pieces on the board. And I'll explain that, but I'm not Bobby Fischer and I can't do that. If you guys don't understand that reference, wow. But anyways, what I mean by that is because I'm going fully custom and pretty much all my cabinetry is gonna be built in, as in built in place, I'm not buying it from like a store and I'm putting a Murphy bed back here that I'm custom building, right? You know, that up there is gonna be, you know, custom. I got my whole bathroom is gonna be custom. There's gonna be a bar here that's gonna be custom. So all of that, I had to know where everything was going because I need to know where outlets are going. I need to know where my washer dryer is going. I need to know where my refrigerator is going, where all the mechanicals for the van life tech system is going, which is my heat and hot water, where my air conditioner is gonna be going, where the batteries are going all the rest of my electrical, like the, like the main breaker. There are so many pieces of the puzzle that you have to put together without seeing it. And that is what I mean by playing chess without any pieces on the board. If I start putting things in here and I don't like something, guess what? I can't change it because now the wire is run through the wall. And because I'm using spray foam insulation, I can't really change it once the wire's there. I can run wire through cabinetry, I can run it through where like my bench and my bed will be. I can run wire through there, I can hide it in places. And the plumbing. Now I'm not doing plumbing inside the walls, I'm doing plumbing inside the tiny house itself. And there's a bunch of different reasons I'm doing it that way. I've spent the last six weeks just going over with a fine tooth comb details of where I'm putting things, and then not only where you're putting things, but products themselves. You know, what type of washer dryer I'm going with, what type of refrigerator I'm going with, you know, the style of shower, how I'm doing it, how I'm building it, the finishes, what I'm using exterior walls. So all of those things, the last six weeks since I've got back from gutted, which was middle of October up to now, it's taken me that long to kind of like work everything out and then run all this wire. I still gotta run the solar through here. I guess my point to all of this is, it's okay to take your time building a van, a tiny house, an expedition vehicle, garage, whatever you're working on, take your time and do it right. I would rather take that extra month and maybe pay an extra month of rent if I really need to in the end. Because this step right here is the most important step in all of either tiny house building or van building. On top of all of those things, I have a full-time job. My full-time job is making video, making content, going to shows like the Tiny Fest, editing videos. So yes, building this is part of my job, but I still have the other side of things. I still have, that's why I have to shut my consultations down for a while because I don't have the time to, to, dice, to go into other people's builds and other people's minds. It's, it takes a lot, because I really do take my time and do that right. Well guys, we got some good news and we got some bad news. The good news is I got all the holes done for the AC tubing or whatever you want to call that. The bad news is I don't believe I've got enough tubing. Chris sent me, I think 20 feet of it. I think I need like 25. I want to run this so this joist right there and drop it about eight inches, run it down, down, and this way. And I just don't have enough. On the video with uh, me going off to Tiny Fest, super excited about that, but check this out. I will show these off when I have, you know, not a camera in my hand. And they are the colors that I am gonna go with for the exterior, so the roof, and the exterior siding, they are metal. They are one steel, one that is aluminum. I am going with aluminum throughout. I'm gonna be sending a little bit more money on the aluminum, but I know you guys can't feel the weight of this, 
but the weight difference is that much. So going with a steel or an aluminum, I vote aluminum because I'm trying to keep this weight down as much as I possibly can. For those that haven't seen my Instagram, if you want to guess the colors I'm going to be going for, then by all means, give it a guess by commenting below. I will see you guys when we're doing a spray foam insulation job on this thing. Hopefully all the wiring will be done by then. Later!